This is part 18 of Link to SQL tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to handle change conflict exception. This is continuation to part 17. In this demo, we'll be using the same example that we worked with in part 17. So please watch part 17 before proceeding. There are three options available to handle change conflict exception. We'll be using refresh mode enum for this purpose. Refresh mode enum has got three different values which define how to handle optimistic concurrency conflicts. The first option is keep current values. When we select this option, it's going to keep all the current changes made by the current user in the data context object. And then when we subsequently call submit changes method, this method is going to save all changes made by the current user to the database, overwriting any changes made by other users after the data was loaded by the current user. Let's look at this in action. Let's flip to Visual Studio. So this is the same example that we worked with in the previous video session. Now when we click this deposit $500 button, we're going to add $500 to the current account balance. All right, now when we have this piece of code executed, and if at all, if there is a change conflict, meaning if somebody else tried to update the same piece of data, then we know for sure there is going to be a change conflict exception and we want to be in a position to handle that. So in order to do that, I'm going to wrap this inside a try block. And then if there is a change conflict, we are going to get that exception. So change conflict exception. Now this exception is present in system.data.link namespace, so let's bring that in. Now, whenever there is a change conflict, you know, we know that the control is going to come into this catch block, and at that point, we want to be in a position to resolve that conflict and then save the changes to the database table. And there are three options. One of the options is to use um, keep current values. So let's see how to do that. So in order to resolve the conflicts, we are going to make use of this data context instance object. So dbay dot change conflict. So this property is going to return a change conflict collection object. And this object has got resolve all method. And this method expects refresh mode to be passed as a parameter. And if you look at refresh mode, it has got three values. So keep current values. Let's select that for now. Now I'm going to write some for each loop code here. Now this for each loop code is actually not required to just handle the exception and save the changes to the database table. This just is going to print the current value, original value, and the database value of each member that has got a change conflict. Let's actually write this code and it will be much clearer. So for each, change conflict object change conflict let's call this object change conflict and db dot change conflicts so we are looping through each object change conflict object and then we are going to use another for each loop to loop through each member change conflict okay so for each member change conflict let's name this member change conflict in object change conflict dot member conflicts and now what we're going to do is print the current value original value and the database value so let's write that to the page so let's use response dot write method and then we are going to use this member conf uh, member change conflict object and when I press dot, notice that we have different properties, current value, database value, and original value. So first, let's go ahead and print the current value. Let's convert that to a string, and then let's append an HTML break so the output comes on different lines. And then to specify that this is indeed printing the current value, let's simply print the string saying current value. Now let's do the same thing for original value and database value. So original value, and then we also want database value. So original value, and then the database value. All right, 
So this method is going to resolve the conflicts by keeping the current values within the data context object. After that, we need to make a call to submit changes method, which is going to save the changes to the database. And then let's call this get accounts data method, which is going to reload the data into the label controls. All right, so with all these changes, let's go ahead and run this. And before we do that, let's actually throw a breakpoint on this line, db.submitChanges, just before we call the submit changes method. And let's run this in debug mode. So while this page is loading, let's go back to SQL Server Management Studio. And at the moment, notice that the account balance is 1000 and the account name is John Mary. So that should be displayed on the page. Now let's go ahead and hit deposit button. So we are going to deposit $500, which means the current account balance will be 1500 right? So let's go ahead and hit that. So it should stop at that breakpoint. So just before we are calling submit changes method, the processing is stopped. And notice that the current value for account balance property is $1,500. Now, let's go back to SQL Server Management Studio and execute this update statement. So when we clicked the submit changes, I mean the deposit $500 button, we are changing the account balance by adding $500. Now here we are executing an update statement which is reducing the account balance by 300. Okay, so after we have loaded the data into the application, somebody else have changed, you know, the same record. So now if you look at the state of our database, look at that. The database value for account balance is 700. And the current value within the data context object for account balance is 1500. The original value is 1000, right? So now let's actually press F10. It should get to this catch block. So we should, you know, have the change conflict exception. Now let's go back, um, let's press F10 once again. So this is going to keep the current values. So let's press F10. Now it's going to loop through each change conflict. So there's going to be only one change conflict because you know, only one field is affected. So if you look at change conflict, notice that you know the count is one. So we are going to now loop through that member which has got the conflict. So that member is nothing but the account balance field. So the current value, look at that. Current value is 1500, data value, um, database value is 700 and the original value is 1000. Now, what did we say that we want to use? We want to use keep current values. So it's going to store now this 1000 into the current value property of the data context object. And then when we call submit changes method, it's going to overwrite this 700 with that 1500. So when we press F5 now, the balance should be updated to 1500. Notice that. The balance is updated to 1500. So the other user's changes are silently overwritten. Okay, so now when we execute this, notice that the account balance is 1500. So that's what keep current values option do. Now let's look at keep changes. What is this going to do? It keeps the current values that have been changed, but updates the other values with the database values. So when we call submit changes method, this will save any changes made by the current user and will preserve any changes made by other users as well if they are not modified by the current user. But if that other user changed the same value as the current user, then the current user's changes are going to overwrite it. Let's look at that in action and then it should be much clearer. So now let's go back to our application and then let's stop this debugging. Let's detach the debugger and then let's change the refresh mode here from keep current values to keep changes. So we are saying to keep only the changes okay, the changes that this current user has made. Now, if at all, if he has not changed any field and if that has been changed by, you know, somebody else behind the scenes, you know, at the same time, then those values, you know, will be stored in the data context object, meaning when we issue an update, it's going to update, you know, preserve those changes made by the other user. Okay, so now let's go back 
to SQL Server Management Studio. Now we are going to execute this account statement, I mean update statement. Notice that at the moment the account balance is 1500. Now we are going to deduct 300 from account balance and we are also going to change account name to John-Mary from John Mary. So here we are updating two fields, the account balance and account name. But if you look at the application here, the application is changing only one field that is the account balance right so now let's run this application within the debug mode and keep in mind we have used keep changes method so now let's click this deposit $500 button uh, but notice at the moment the balance is $1500 so when we click deposit 500 it should hit that breakpoint and stop right there so the account balance should be 2000 okay now let's actually execute this update statement so now the other user have changed two fields at the same time okay that is the account balance and the account name the original account balance you know was 1500 now it is changed to 1200 and the account name is changed from John Mary to John dash Mary okay now let's go back to our application and let's press F5 and notice the current and original and database values for both the properties. So the current value for account name is John dash Mary. Now look at this. That is the value, you know, that the other user has made it has preserved that change because the current user did not modify that property. So whatever is not modified by the current user, you know, those will be retained as they were. If another user has made changes, those changes will be preserved. So the original value for that property was John Mary, and you know the value that is stored in the database is John Dash Mary. Now, if you look at account balance, you know the story is a little different. So the original value was 1500, okay, and the database value is 1200 because we used that update query to reduce the balance by 300, and the current value is 2000. So this property value is overwritten okay so keep changes as the name suggests it's going to keep only the changes within the data context object that means when we call submit changes method it will save any changes made by the current user and it will also preserve any changes made by the other users as long as the current user has not modified the same fields okay so that's keep changes now let's look at overwrite current values so this is pretty straightforward so this is going to update the data context object with the current database value. So we are basically saying overwrite the current values, which means you know that all the changes made by the current user will be discarded. So let's actually look at this in action. So let's go back to our application and then let's keep this to let's actually stop debugging and let's change this to overwrite current values and then let's run the application in the debug mode and let's go back to SQL Server Management Studio so at the moment the current balance is 12, uh, 2000 and the name is John dash Mary let's actually change it to John Mary and let's try to deduct $300 from the account but before we execute that update statement, let's click this button, deposit $500. So it should stop at that statement right there. And if you look at the account balance at the moment, look at that. That's the current value, 2,500, right? Now let's go back and execute this update statement. So the original value was 2,500, the account balance. So that's changed now. I mean, the original account balance was 2000 we directed 300 so the account balance is changed to 1700 and John dash Mary is changed to John Mary and within our application we have increased the balance by 500 so now the current account balance is 2500 because initially it was 2000 now when we call submit changes there is going to be change conflict exception so it's going to come to the catch block let's hit F5 now look at what happened now the option that we have chosen is overwrite current values. So what it has essentially done is overwritten the current values, you know, uh, with the values that are present in the database. So when we call submit changes method, you know, nothing is actually going to happen. Okay, so all the current user changes are discarded because that's what we are telling 
when we selected override current values. Thank you for listening and have a great day.